Welcome to the Pure Flix podcast. I'm Billy Hollowell and I'm here with Becky Thompson. Becky, how are you? I'm well, Billy. How are you? How was your fourth? My fourth was amazing. But before we get there, I have to ask you this because I was on your Instagram. and I was trying to I, jump over this part, Billy. How was your fourth? Just kidding. We can talk about it. We can you talk wanted about it. it. You did not because I told you we were going to have to talk about this. And I think you were just like, let's just go right to the 4th of July weekend. No. <laughs> I, I need to ask you, so I, I'm watching my stories on Instagram and I see you pop up and I see you in, I mean, I don't know what the proper name of it is. It's sort of like a hat with a net all around your head. Like you were covered almost like a, like what beekeepers have. So I just, I need to understand what was going on in these Instagram stories? Yeah. So I feel like we were for the listeners, we're going to have to paint a real good picture of this because it's just fair to them. Like it will not be okay. funny at all unless we give them an accurate description of this hat. So Which first I don't think I can do. Know, so you need to do it. You need to do it. Okay, okay. Go. So it, first of all, it's a child's hat. It's a, it's a, it's a hat for a child that my mom purchased for my children. And um, I told her the mosquitoes were bad earlier in the summer. We hadn't moved to Oklahoma yet. So we were still in Tennessee. And, um, and so I, I put them in the closet cause you know, I hadn't seen a lot of mosquitoes when we got back here to Oklahoma. I just hadn't seen a ton. And then it rained, Billy, and it rained and it rained. And then it was like, I don't even, I can't accurately describe the level of mosquito infestation in our small town. I mean, it's like, hide your children, hide your, you know, hide your family. It's just, it's the worst. I have a white Do they white travel in hordes? Was, like, are they, yeah. are they oh, in hordes? It is. It felt like biblical plague. That was it. It was biblical plague level <laughs> mosquito infestation. So it's like they're covering the door. You can't go outside. Kids are running. Go, go, go. It's like a war movie. It's awful. So I pulled out, back to the hat, I pulled out this tiny child-sized camouflaged hat. And it's like a safari hat, maybe. It's like a bucket. It's like a bucket you wear on your head with a wide brim and mosquito netting that hangs down. And then it's tied at the bottom to keep the mosquitoes from flying up on your face. And, you know, I can't just protect my face. So even though it's 110, you know, degree heat index, I had to put a coat on and I was a double say, layer you those a coat. <laughs> yeah. A coat it was like a winter a double- outfit. <laughs> It was. It was a winter outfit. And I was, but here's, here's why, you know, people are sending, they're like, what, why would you do that? What were you doing? Go, going to the grocery store? No, I have a garden that I have been working furiously to get under control. This new house we just moved into. And when I thought it was a smaller project, cause isn't that to the truth where you just think this isn't that big. I can do this in oh, a day. It's easy. like a two week, right. it's a two week project. Now, Billy, I bought all these plants before the mosquitoes hit to go into my flower garden. And every day I looked out the window at these plants and I was like, guys, I'm sorry. I can't get you in the ground. You know, it's your life or mine right now, guys. I'm sorry. I can't do Until it. Until you remembered the Until mosquito I net. The hat. And that's when that was a good moment for me. I pulled the hat out. You decided out. to share the journey. Did it keep them out of your face while you planted? Here's the Here's the best part of sharing the journey of wearing the mosquito hat and coat outside in 100 degree Oklahoma weather. I saw no mosquitoes <laughs> until I saw zero, just to be clear, no mosquitoes, didn't see one until this very serendipitous moment at the very end of the evening after being outside for hours and hours and somehow, you know, not getting heat stroke. One mosquito landed on the front of my net and I was like, ha ha vindicated. <laughs> it did not get me. You didn't get me. It was, I all just, it, it was, it was a moment as I was scrolling though. We have to talk about this. So anyway, you need to go and try to find that if it's still live when you see, when you listen to this episode or watch Are you this saying episode, I should but make it a highlight. I should probably make it. A I highlight. feel like you should make it a highlight. That's what I'm trying to bully you into doing right now is making it okay. a highlight so that people could find it. Um, all right. So we, we've got a lot on this, sh- on the show that doesn't involve <laughs> mosquitoes today. We've got Steven Kendrick, um, coming on. He's one of the Kendrick brothers. They've made amazing movies like fireproof courageous, and he has a new documentary, um, um, he and his brother Alex, it's coming out this fall in September. And so with no further ado, let's welcome Stephen Kendrick to the podcast. Stephen, welcome to the show. Thanks for joining us. Glad to be a part of the program. Thanks for asking me. 
All right, so you've got a lot going on, as always, and you have a new documentary, Show Me the Father. Tell us a little bit about this. It'll be coming out in the fall. So this is our first documentary, and uh, it really was birthed out of prayer. It was interesting that God redirected us after Overcomer. We've got all these feature films, you know, that we've been developing and, get, and continue to work on. And, uh, but it was like, you need to make a documentary. And we're like, about what, you know? <laughs> and so, and, uh, and it was specifically fatherhood. And then he sends us uh, an award-winning director, Rick Altizer, and a, a video producer from India, uh, who's a strong believer. He comes and he's wanting to make documentaries. And we start focusing in on fatherhood and all the research we were already connected to about fatherhood. Um, and then I was preaching on it, all these, the theology behind the fatherhood of God and, uh, that he created fatherhood on earth and all the roles of an earthly father to reflect his roles in the lives of believers. And so, and then we get connected to some epic fatherhood stories. Uh, one of them, I don't want to give it away is, was the best response ESPN has ever had to one of their E60 stories. And, uh, but, but it's, they don't talk about the Lord and we get to talk about the Lord in the midst of the whole journey because God was behind the scenes as part of that. And so we actually talk about our dad blessing us at our weddings and what it looks like to do a fatherly blessing because everybody wants their dad to tell them he loves them and is proud of them. And, uh, and then my daughter's adoption story has some incredible answers to prayer and miracles. So that's one of the five stories that we tell. So we shoot this documentary during a COVID year. We <laughs> cut it together and it ends up being way better than anybody anticipated. And uh, it's very cinematic. It's an emotional roller coaster. It has some great twists and turns in it. And we talk about the fatherhood of God. Uh, because just because Jesus is your Lord doesn't mean you relate to you relate well to God as your father. And it's actually a core part of our faith in God, what our earthly father relationship was like. If your dad always broke his promises, you'll have a tendency to think God's going to break his promises. If your dad was not a very loving, affirming, uh, involved father, you will tend to put that over on God and think God is the same way. So um, we talk about, learning to relate to God as a loving father and let Jesus be the example rather than your earthly father to help you understand what God is like. And so it gets deep with some of the theology, but it's a fun ride and it's kids like it. Uh, we've already screened it to multiple uh, groups of leaders and ministers. It's been fun to watch all these five true stories interweave in show me the father and uh, we're excited about it coming out in theaters. I mean, it's really a miracle that God would just say, hey, this is going to be in theaters across the U.S. So wow. September 10th. How do, so September 10th. How do you know? And by the way, Becky, just you released a book with your dad, um, you know, basically inspiring fathers, which is kind of cool. So this is something yeah. that has been on has been on your orbit. But here's I just wanted to like circle back to to what you were saying before. You know, God kind of led you there. You knew God wanted you to do it. This is going to sound it may sound like a strange question, but you'll understand why I'm asking it. How did you know that? How do you guys know cuz you've done yeah. so many films now that God wants you to do something like that? <clears throat> it's 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 great talking about this because uh, Jesus said in John 10, my sheep hear my voice and they know me and they follow me. In Hebrews 1, he talks about how God will speak to us in various ways, but now he speaks to us through his son. Uh, we went through experiencing God years ago, that whole Bible study about how God will speak to us and invite us into a journey. And then the Lord really took it to another level when I was studying Colossians three and four, there's eight different things that it gives us that God will use to speak to uh, his children and speak to us about something. And so here's what usually happens. If I can summarize this journey, we're praying in a posture of surrender. Lord, we just want to do whatever you want. Would you give us clarity? Would you give us direction? And we're just in that. And sometimes it's months, you know, or years of praying over a project. And so when the Lord is in something, a few things will happen. One, the ideas, the truths from Scripture will start hitting us at the same time as the vision, the direction 
about that project specifically. Um, it will align with this with the word. There'll be times when we're reading the word and God will give us specific verses that will line up. Like on Fireproof, he was teaching me about marriage and unconditional love. And I had done all these Bible studies on marriage and unconditional love. And then Alex shows up and says, I'm, I was jogging around the block. I had this incredible movie idea. There's this total joy and peace in my heart. I think this is of God. And he lays out Fireproof in my driveway. And I'm like, that's of God. We need to make that movie and we need to write that book, The Love Dare, because he didn't know what was in The Love Dare. He just knew the concept. And then I walked back in my house and it was like God was saying, hey, do you really think the last two years of you studying marriage and 1 Corinthians 13 and covenant and unconditional love was just for your one Bible study group? You know, this is a bigger <laughs> vision and a bigger, bigger plan. So so the word will be a part of it. Colossians 3.15. Uh, I'm sorry, uh, Colossians 3.16, uh, a peace will come. Let the peace of God rule in your heart. There's a sense of rightness about it, and it's corporate. It's me, Alex, our wives. There is this sense of God is in this. And then the provision will start showing up. It's like other people are confirming, and we'll get connected to uh, the expert in cross country, you know, at the same time that we're praying about, should we make this movie about cross country running? So Alex is usually getting the scene ideas as the director and these very powerful, emotional, inspirational kind of epiphany scene ideas. I'm getting a lot of the biblical principles from scripture. There's a sense of peace about it. Uh, then the doors open, you know, uh, we will see the provision and we'll see uh, so in Colossians 4, he says, pray for me that God will open a door for us to make known the mystery of the gospel. So we will see, um, you know, Sony says, "I hey, we want to release this in theaters, you know, <laughs> you know, or, or we will have, when we were on staff of the church, the pastor says, yes, y'all need to go make this movie, you know? So we'll see all of those things line up at the same time. And um, so we'll start moving forward by faith not having it. It's always that we, we just have enough for the next step in the journey. We don't have everything figured out. You know, some people are like, Hey, you know, I don't want to move forward and trust God. And until I have every question answered and well, that's not how God operates. You know, he tells Abraham, leave your family. I'm not even telling you where you're going. Just leave, you know, and uh, <laughs> just and do you, it. You move forward by faith. And then God then illumines the next hundred yards in front of the car. You know, the, the do you guys get hit with doubt though? Like, do you ever in that process feel like you're not sure? Oh yeah. Well, at, at the front end, we're praying and we've got, you know, a board of 20 different movie ideas and have like five different documentary ideas and TV show ideas. And we're like, it all looks good, but everybody has a good idea about a movie we found. But there's a difference between a good idea and a God idea. And when the Lord is in something, there is this overwhelming sense where he's calling on the phone saying, I'm in this. And the front door is ringing saying, here's the money to do it. And then our, our wives are, you know, I just had a time in the word this morning and God gave me this verse and it confirms it. And then we hear about the stats and the culture that this is the desperate need right now. And then the Lord connects us with the right actor to play that role. And just, and we're talking to Sony and they're like, Hey, we want to release a film for this budget. And it fits that. I mean, it's just like, do, 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 do. that kind of thing starts happening. And sometimes though, it's months of quiet and prayer and walking with the Lord and nothing. We're just like, let's just keep being faithful. And as husbands and fathers and do what God's entrusted to us until he, till the burning bush shows up, you know? And so, but I could tell you about every one of the movies, how basically that journey has happened. There is a, there, the Holy Spirit kind of prompts with the idea, the direction, the word confirms there's peace, there's provision, there's open doors. And then we can't take credit for it because we didn't manufacture it. You know, we just kind of move forward and we saw God laying tracks in front of a moving train. Mm. You know, over the years, it's funny. You always convict me like you're kind of doing that right now because, because I like to go. I like to jump in. I like to just do it. Right. And so I like try to come up with ideas and I'm, and I'm running and I'm moving. But then you do realize a lot of times, OK, I didn't actually go through that process of making sure this is what I'm supposed to be doing. And that's something I've really tried to integrate. And it's actually been the interviews with you guys that have always brought me back to that because I feel like we've I've talked to you so many times throughout the different projects over the years and, and you always remind me of that and even today we started with prayer you start your interviews with prayer before we before we went on air and I think that 
that's such an important thing for everybody, no matter what it is you're doing in life. Um, to do that. Becky, what is your, what is your like prayer process like for projects? Cause Becky is a prolific author as well. You know, I was just sitting here thinking about that, about, because I, I wanted to jump in and interrupt a second ago and just say, so when was this seed really planted in your heart? And, you know, how did you, you talked about, you know, how you continued the process of creating, you know, this documentary and how it all sort of came together. But for me, Sometimes I have to distinguish between a creative spark and then what I would call a Holy Spirit spark, yes. you know, and and often those really big what feel like cataclysmic aha moments are when I can tell, oh, it's both. You know, this mm -hmm. is the spirit igniting something inside yes. of me. And that often happens for me during those quiet prayer times. Or I love how with your brother, you know, he's running around the block and he's like, I've got this idea. And I think, you know, maybe for the people watching or listening here, they're thinking, what, you know, what kind of posture of my heart do I have to have, right? Mm. In order to encounter the Lord so he can direct me into my next big aha moment or my next big, this is what I'm supposed to do. Yes. And, you know, I'd just like for you to maybe speak into the idea that that doesn't always happen in the same place. You know, I mean, maybe for you, it doesn't always happen like it happens for your brother. So for this moment in this particular situation for, you know, show me the father, I would like to know can you remember your aha moment? Can you remember the moment where you're like this, we have to do this? Um, I had, a, I had written on our whiteboard in our office. I would like to make like four different documentaries one day. Um, one of them was about fatherhood. One of them was about, uh, the cross of Christ and Jesus being the only way. Uh, one of them was about abortion and pro-life and this generation understanding so much of not only the theology, but the statistics and the history on Planned Parenthood and all of that stuff. This generation doesn't know it. They haven't. Right. They don't they don't realize the battles that have been fought and the lies that they're being told every day. And so so that's one of them. And then the Bible being the word of God, how we can know it's true, uh, how we can build our lives upon it. There's so much incredible research on that the Bible's backed up by archaeology, by science, by prophecy, by transformation, by world change. I mean, it goes on and on and on. And so, but these ideas are good ideas and they're things that we would love to pursue. But we've just, we've seen, we've seen in ministry that when we chase good ideas that are not of the Lord, it's a lot of extra work and you feel like Peter when he said, I fished all night and caught nothing. I mean, it's like <laughs> so you good. usually yeah. see a little bit of fruit. <laughs> mm -hmm. I mean, it's a lot of work and a little bit of fruit. Yeah, um, that's what I was talking about before, though. A hundred percent. Like, that's what I relate to. You come to that place where you're like, oh, maybe I should have gone through a different process <laughs> than I did. Right. That's right. So th there's that verse in scripture that talks about they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. A hummingbird flaps its wings like 53 times a second. It has to eat its body weight like four times a day. I don't know what the stats are, but you know, it's constantly working like crazy. And an eagle stays up on top of the mountain and just waits. And when the wind comes, it, it mounts up its wings as eagles. It runs, you know, it's not, it's not weary and it can just flap its wings five times in an hour and just soar. And we've seen, ministry and projects when we were, because Alex and I are both creatives, mm -hmm. when we were creatively ambition driven. Mm -hmm. And it was a ton of work and a little bit of fruit. But we've also seen when we're like, hey, let's just, let's die to these, all, all these ideas that we have, because I, I totally relate to you when you're like, hey, I've got this amazing, cool, creative idea on an invention or a book or a movie or whatever. Mm -hmm. What I've seen is if I just stick it in my prayer incubator, a lot of times it'll die within two weeks. <laughs> so good. You know? And it's just like what sounded like an amazing idea at three o'clock in the morning. Suddenly I'm like, I don't really want to do that anymore. You know? <laughs> and so, but if it's of the Lord, the timing is right. The, um, um, it won't die. It, right. it keeps getting bigger. You know, it, there is more confirmation. And what you'll see in scripture is that when God says to Peter, uh, no, he, t he tells Cornelius, go to send somebody to Joppa and get a guy named Peter to come talk to you about the right. gospel. Right. Then he tells Peter, 
while he's praying, there's a dude at the front door named Cornelius. Go with him. Yeah. You know, he tells Ananias, go pray over Saul. And then he tells Saul, there's a guy named Ananias coming to pray over you. You know, he's, right. and so there's this sense of confirmation. So um, we pray for that confirmation and, and God will give it to us in his word. He'll give it to us with one another. Uh, and we'll shoot down each other's ideas all the time. Hey, that's a good idea. That's not a God idea kind of deal. Right. Uh, but when it's of the Lord, there is the sense of the wind is blowing, lift your wings. Oh, you don't have it all figured out, you know, but the wind is blowing. And back to what you were saying earlier, um, I grew up in a Baptist church. You know, a, a lot of times you don't hear about the Holy Spirit that much. You hear about the Father, the Son, and the Holy Bible. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> but people are afraid to talk about the Holy Spirit. And I've noticed the terminology is a little bit different where they'll say, uh, I think God may have told me to do something. And they'll say the Lord or God. If you if you if you hang out with someone <laughs> that's like Assembly of God, Church of God, or, you know, more charismatic, they'll say the Holy Spirit spoke to me. Right. You know, and they'll specifically refer to the Holy Spirit. Well, in Ephesians, it says that when a person believes the gospel, they're sealed with the Spirit. Ephesians 4 says, don't grieve him, get all bitterness and junk out of your life. And then in Ephesians 5, he says, now be filled with and led by the, the, mm -hmm. the Spirit. So for us to be able to say, Lord, this is in your word, forget denominations, forget traditions. You are telling me in, in your word, I need to be filled up and to be led by your Spirit. So I want to get all junk out of my life. Any sin, any bitterness, any un unforgiveness, any, and then I'm just asking you, fill me and lead me by your spirit, whatever that means. Yeah. And mm -hmm. it's not me up on a stage and, you know, I'm suddenly have this glowing, you know, epiphany. <laughs> it could be I'm mowing my grass and there's just this clear prompting, go share the gospel with your neighbor. Or you need to reach out, you need to call your parents today and encourage them. Or you need to give some money to this specific ministry, or you need to reach out to this child. I have six kids and you need to spend more time with your daughter today. And it's just this clear, and it always aligns with love and with the word and with the gospel, with whatever it is. And I've seen consistently, if I follow those promptings, there'll be a lot of fruit and the timing will be perfect. And I'm like, wow, my parents were just praying. Would God send somebody to encourage him today? And I called, you know? But the, yeah. we'll see that also happen on the creative process where we're praying, Lord, help us to write this scene or help us to figure out this plot point or where's the actor that needs to play this role? And he's like Priscilla Shire to be in War Room. And we're like, she's not an actress. <laughs> you know, how does that work? You know, but there's this sense of she's the one. And we're like, okay. she is now. <laughs> yeah, she is now. So, well, <clears throat> we can make a movie, but only God can change the heart. And ultimately, we can all communicate the gospel 479 times as clearly as possible in a movie and the light bulb not turn on for somebody spiritually and they walk out going, that meant nothing for me, you know? And so people need to have a genuine encounter with the Lord. <laughs> I mean, when a pastor uh, is preaching on tithing, you know, but God is on him. God can convict a man about him mistreating his wife at the same time. And the pastor's not even talking about that, you know? So we have, we have said, Lord, would you allow us to operate in such a way so that you will place your hand of blessing, favor, whatever you want to call it, grace upon this project. And that when people are watching it, whether it's in a theater or on an airplane or on their iPhone at three o'clock in the morning, they have an encounter with you. And so in Show Me the Father, fatherhood is universal. Everybody has a father story. And it's always tied to your heart, too. You know, whether it's an emotional, he abused me or neglected me or abandoned me, and you get choked up thinking about that, or you deeply loved him because he adored you and prayed over you and blessed you like our dad did at our weddings, you know? And so, um, but we tie these very cool uh, twists and turns emotional fatherhood stories that you will watch as you watch Show Me the Father. And we interweave them with truths about the fatherhood of God. Uh, because mm -hmm. Jesus said, we don't relate to God just as this distant, abstract mm -hmm. being. We relate to him as a father. And Ephesians 3 says that God created fatherhood on earth because of his eternal fatherhood in heaven, who he is. You know, before there was a marriage in a garden in the Old Testament, there was a father and a son in eternity who loved each other. Mm -hmm. 
And, uh, and so he's inviting us into understanding how he relates to Jesus, but how he wants to relate to us because he spiritually adopts us in Christ when we, when we place our faith in him. And so, uh, when people watch show me the father, they're going to be captivated by the fatherhood journey stories, those emotional stories, but then they're going to be hearing a lot of biblical truth. Uh, you'll hear true testimonies of people coming to Christ and how God became their father because their earthly father was horrible. This topic is so hugely important because I feel like right now culture is just so fragmented and there's so much confusion. And obviously fatherhood is such an issue to begin with, right, in, in our culture. So to be focusing on who God is and his nature and his love for us in this way, it couldn't it couldn't come at a better time. Now, I have to also ask you before we before we let you go. You have another, pro- you're not busy enough, okay? Right. You, you two brothers don't have enough going on. You have another project, Courageous Legacy, that obviously Courageous was a huge film um, in the faith community, um, did very well, and quite a bit of time has passed, and now you're remastering and re-releasing this. Tell us a little bit about that. So we're coming upon 10 years uh, since Courageous was released in theaters, and it hit us that there's millions of young men have become dads in the last 10 years that are going to watch this movie differently now that they're holding their own children in their arms. And, uh, but this, this issue of dads stepping up and being courageous and being strong leaders of their homes is just as important as ever. Men's ministries have shut down across the nation because of COVID and they need to reboot and restart. Um, dads are disengaged in so many ways. And it was our own father's spiritual resolution when he said, I'm going to forgive my dad, my grandfather for their alcoholism, their dysfunction, and I'm going to serve the Lord. I'm going to follow the Lord and be faithful to my wife and my kids. It was that commitment that completely changed our family tree and caused us to grow up watching a dad walk with God. And so we feature that resolution in the movie Courageous. That's the commitment the men make, you know. When they're saying, I'm going to be faithful to my wife. I'm going to be faithful to my kids. Uh, as for me and my house, we'll serve the Lord. I'm going to walk in integrity, those kind of things. And so Courageous has had an international impact for the last 10 years. I mean, thousands of officers hearing the gospel and coming to Christ around the world. Uh, men reconnecting with their kids. Uh, men seeing Courageous Fatherhood for the first time in their life watching the film. And so we've got all these cool epic stories. So we said, what if we re-edited the movie? Uh, now we've learned a lot in the last 10 years about filmmaking. What if we put some cool drone shots in there? What if we share impact stories as to what God's done around the world through Courageous originally? And let's put in some deleted scenes. Let's tighten the edit. Let's recolor it. Let's bump it up to 4K. Let's fix the sound. Let's change the music. And let's shoot a new ending and show where these officers are 10 years later. So after the big speech, when he says, I will, it jumps and you see where they are 10 years later and they're interacting. And so, and we can do that without makeup or special effects. They really did age 10 years, you know? <laughs> and so, um, so we, we re we reproduced this movie and it feels more like an event now. It's the best version of the film. And so we want to reach a new generation and we want to inspire and encourage dads. And so Sony's, releasing Show Me the Father on September 10th in theaters across the U.S. Anybody can go see it. It's PG rated. You can take your kids or your best friend or your neighbors to it. And uh, and I don't think you're going to be disappointed. I think you're going to re- be rocked by Show Me the Father. And then five weeks later, Courageous Legacy is what we're calling it, will be released in theaters across the U.S. and uh, on October 15th. And so it's a one-two punch. One is True Stories, Show Me the Father. One is the the narratives of Courageous Legacy, and we hope to impact the new generation with these films. Well, listen, I so appreciate you coming on the show. It's good to catch up with you, and I can't wait for these projects to come out. Thanks for all you do. Oh, man, thank you guys. At showmethefathermovie.com and uh, courageousthemovie.com. Both those websites people can go to to sign up for updates and more information. Now, listen, thanks Amazing. for what you guys are doing, man. This is great. I appreciate you guys uh, giving uh, artists a voice and y'all also honoring God in the process with your gifts and talents. 
Well, and thanks for positively convicting us too, by the way. It's a good thing to be convicted <laughs> to remember. And this is for everybody. I know it's not, but it, because you're living authentically, it makes us, rem it's a reminder to us, right? Of how we should approach everything that we're doing. So thanks so much. Appreciate it. Thank you guys. God bless. That was great, Becky. I always love getting a chance to, uh, to talk with him. Absolutely. I mean, he has so much wisdom. I feel like that interview could have gone on for a lot longer. And I'm so excited about, I mean, two things. Sometimes you see a movie by a filmmaker and you're like, how long until their next one comes out? But I feel like they've got that one two punch of, you know, the documentary and then six weeks later, Courageous, you know, comes back out. And oh, I'm I'm excited. I kept thinking, like, as he was talking, and we talked about this a little bit, you know, with him, but just like your process when you write, my process when I write, and full disclosure, full honesty, like the last book that I wrote, it was really the first time that I felt like I really sat down and I understood what God really wanted me to do very clearly, and I did not want to do it. And I was like, <laughs> okay, God, maybe there's something else. Like, let's, you know, and I kept trying to find a way out of it. But when I leaned into it and knew I was, and knew I was supposed to do it, it was the most rewarding experience. And I think a lot of us, we really struggle with, a, trying to figure that out. And he really detailed, like, mm -hmm. how do we figure out what God wants for us? And then B, once we know, especially when we don't want to do it, carrying that out. So I don't know for you if you've had those moments where you're like, I really don't want to do this, God, and like what you've done. Oh, for sure. <laughs> for both, you know, like I've had moments where I'm like, I would prefer, is there any other way to do this, <laughs> you know? And I just, I would, if we could come up with another idea. And, you know, but I, I have found that there are good ideas and there are God ideas. And if you give God the good ones, sometimes he will make them great and, you know, add his blessing to them. But if you just, I love how he said, if you just wait for the God ones, you know, you are joining into his process. And, um, you know, for creatives, it is so hard to be like, was this my fantastic thought? But when he said he puts his ideas into that prayer incubator and it just incinerates, I had this picture, he said it burns up all the bad ideas. You know, I just was like, that's not an incubator, that's an incinerator. That is a fire prayer tunnel moment and you are, but it's so true, you know? And I think, you know, the people listening or watching, they might not think to themselves, well, I'm making a movie or I'm writing a book, but they might be making decisions about like, you know, sending their kids to school or, taking a different job or moving to a different neighborhood. And, you know, how can we trust that it is the Holy Spirit leading us? How can we trust that it is God who's the one prompting us? And just how Stephen said, it's just a part of everyday life and how we can, um, you know, go through those places outlined in scripture. I feel like there's so much practical truth. I want to see the movies. I'm inspired. I just, what a great interview. Yeah, no, he was amazing. All right. So if you want to see some of their other projects, by the way, their film Fireproof is actually on Pure Flakes. You can stream that. Um, just came back to the platform. And that's a great film. I just watched it again the other day. Um, Kirk Cameron's in that one. And it deals with marriage, right? So we talked a lot about parenting and fatherhood. That one deals with marriage. And I just want to remind everybody the Pure Flix Family Camp experience is really cool. It's a guide you download. It's a free guide. It takes you through a whole bunch of different family movies. There's one family movie every week that you can check out. There's a devotional that goes with it. You can sit down. It's not just for families with kids. It's really for any family. A husband and wife could do it. You've got the devotional. You've got the movie suggestions. And you've got some fun activities for kids and for the whole family, game nights, Bible trivia nights. And so that is going on all summer. You can go to pureflix.com slash family camp to download that and check that out and becky as always it has been a blast it really has oh it's so much fun i am enjoying our our interviews and yeah i'm really enjoying them and we'll be back next week with another episode of the pure flicks podcast mm -hmm.